Thanks for watching another episode of Jimmy Chang. We're going to be talking about the one wheel, specifically geese, Canadian geese, and why I don't like them. We're going to talk about nose diving. Then I'm going to show off some new gear that I recently put on my one wheel plus. See that gear there? It's pretty stealthy. You may not even see it. So here I am cruising one of my favorite parks. And this time of year, the geese have migrated down and so they are, they are just pooping all over the place which gets kind of annoying. I'm grateful that I have this fender to help uh, mitigate, we'll talk about that word more, mitigate the poop. But here I found this neat statue and I think this statue is an ode to all those who have ever nosedived. And so let's talk a little bit more about nosediving. Here's a recent nosedive, just cruising along having fun. These guys were great. They were, let me use their video here. You can watch the entire video in the link down below. But this got me thinking. Let's talk about nose dives for this episode. So a nose dive happens when you've exceeded the capacity of the motor, or when there is equipment failure and the motor fails. And so when that happens, the nose dives on your board and it stops very abruptly, causing the rider to get thrown off. Part of the reason why nose dives are so devastating is because they happen so quickly. There's very little time to react. And so that got me thinking, how long do you have to get ready for a nose dive once it starts happening? If you use this equation here, time it takes for an object to fall a certain distance, you're able to calculate how long it would take for the nose to fall um, if the engine were to cut out. So with this calculation, I'm making some assumptions such as the nose of the board is about 10 inches high. That's a limitation because no one rides with a board that high. Another limitation is that bo the board is connected to an axle, so it's not free falling. But I wanted to do a quick and dirty calculation to see approximately how long a nose dive would take to happen. And I know I didn't account for all the variables. I don't think you can account for all the variables. And so with the nose of the board sitting about 10 inches up, um, how long would it take for that to fall freely? Um, if the engine were to cut out, these are all just kind of generalized numbers that you see here. But after you plug in the numbers and you do the calculation, I get a time of 0.23 seconds. So that is not very much time to recover from a nose dive. If you could give yourself just a fraction of a second more time, that may help mitigate the damage that a nosedive may cause. And so that's why we're seeing all these different products, such as the Glider by Synergy Wiz, the Carbon Shield by Carbon Smith, these roller thingies by someone in their garage, and then the Fangs by Lancer. And so here, I'm showing off my Fangs. If you're interested in seeing the installation of the fangs, you can watch my previous video. If you are interested in reading a full review, you can read that on my website at oneradwheel.com. In this case, I am going to try to reproduce the only situations where I have ever nose-dived. I have nose-dived twice in my one-wheel career and both times it was going up a fairly steep grade hill with a low battery. And so you can see I am going up and down this hill trying to get that nose to dive. Unfortunately I started the day with a full battery and so I had to go up and down many many times before I was able to get my battery to below 30 percent. Once I got the battery charged to below 30, 40 to 30 percent I was able to find some success and I was able to put these fangs to work, so watch carefully. I know what you're thinking, that was kind of weak, but you have to understand this is going against every fiber of my being to kind of push into that nose and go against the pushback.
so you can see that surge after the fangs keep me up so normally uh, having the front of the board dig into the pavement like that would normally throw me off my board but not with these fangs and so I'm actually very pleasantly surprised and happy with the results. If anyone can tell me what's causing that squeaking noise and how to fix it, I'd be very grateful to you. Also, I ask, stop making fun of my shoes. I've asked Santa to get me some skater shoes, and so hopefully those will be coming soon. If you guys have any suggestions on what type of shoes I can get, I'd love to hear it. So at this point, I realized that my battery was running low and I better head back to my car before I run out of batteries and have to do the walk of shame. So as I was heading back, oh, take a look at that. Do you see that on the side of my board? That is a brand new handle. I know it's pretty stealthy, and that's why they call it the stealth handle. So Matt over at Landsurf sent this over to me to try out. He saw that I've been using some cheap Amazon DIY type handles, and he wanted me to step up my game. So. Fortunately or unfortunately on this trip, I ran out of batteries on my one wheel and so I got to use the stealth handle firsthand. And so it's, it's nice, it sits flush and like its name, it's stealthy, it kind of blends right in with the board. It's very comfortable, um, as comfortable as something can be when it's weighing 30 pounds and you're having to lug it all the way back to your car. I like the handle, it's low profile, it was easy to install, it looks good, it feels good, and it feels solid. And so, you know, it, it is a, a definite upgrade from what I was using, those Amazon DIY handles, the, they were actually Jeep handles. You can watch one of my previous videos to see how I installed those. Here, I'm going to take off those old handles, that old handle and install the new stealth handle. comment down below on the type of shoe you think I should be wearing when I'm on my one wheel. I'm new to this whole skating thing, but I seem to get a lot of comments about my shoes and how I am not wearing the appropriate shoes. So leave a comment down below with your favorite type of shoe and I'll uh, pick the most popular one. I'll buy them and um, I will use them and, and let you know if there is indeed a difference, which there probably will be since just about everyone is telling me that uh, I need to change my shoes. So as always, thanks for watching. Please like if you haven't already subscribed. I've got a lot of great content coming soon and uh, a lot of new products that I am going to be testing. 
If you want more information, you can go to my website at oneradwheel.com to learn more.